Hi everybody, it's me Debbie from Ask Debbie About Hair. I know it's been a, a while since you've seen me, maybe a few months, but you all know this year has been a trying year for all of us. I've been maintaining, staying home, doing the shelter in place, taking care of my family, but I realized that I miss my YouTube family and I wanted to come back and do another video for you. Many people have been asking me, Debbie, how are you growing your hair? Now you all know me, for me having that short pixie cut. I've been rocking a short pixie cut for about 10 to 15 years, and that has been my signature look for years. But last year, I started growing my hair out, and I didn't know where it was gonna lead. I didn't know whether I was gonna cut it, but I decided, you know what? I'm always sharing with you as a hair loss practitioner how to grow your hair, and then as a nutritionist, how to be healthy. And I'm doing both. So I figured, why not grow my hair out and share with you my journey and my experience on what I do to keep my hair growing. Now, whether if I'm going to keep it, I don't know because I still love my short pixie cut. But I am loving this new look. I am loving the hair growth. I'm loving how the hair is growing. Natural hair is a lot to maintain. I have to tell you, I keep this hair in a ponytail more than anything else because it's like, oh my gosh, I got to twist out. I got to twist out different things. Or I'll use my flaxseed, which helps to pop the curl, but I got to mix it and make it and there's so much going on. But today I want to share with you some of my tips that I do for my hair growth. I use the aloe vera plant and today I'm going to show you my way of using the aloe vera plant. <music> Now, there are so many wonderful people on YouTube and on social media showing you how they use the aloe vera plant. And I'm loving all of the influencers and all of the, the different people that are showing you how they're growing their hair. I love it so much because if anyone could take the time to share with you for free how they're growing their hair, they have to be wonderful people. But I'm going to show you what I do with the aloe vera plant. I'm going to show you three things that I do with it. One, how I cut it, how I use it, how I freeze it. I'm going to show you how I make a facial out of it. And I'm going to show you how to make a aloe vera cold pressed oil. Let's go. So I'm going to show you how to cut the aloe vera plant and we have to cut the top and the bottoms off and we have to cut the thorny sides off and so that's where we'll start. So you want to cut the top part off and be very careful with your knife. That's one of the problems with cutting aloe. You, it's slippery and you have a knife. So we're going to cut about three inches from the bottom. Now you see there we have the thorny sides or the serrated edges. You're gonna use your knife and cut away from yourself. I've seen people do this and they cut themselves because they cut the leaf toward themselves. And just use your knife and cut slowly and cut it away from yourself. Now, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how most people cut their aloe vera. The first thing is your aloe vera has something in it called aloin. It's that yellow sap that comes out of the, the plant and it's that stinky smell. It actually is a, it's a laxative. And what you wanna do is you have to basically soak it or let all of the aloin drip out of your aloe vera plant before you use it. So you get a pitcher of water and let it sit there for about 15 to 30 minutes and you'll see that the water will start to turn yellow. That's when you know you have most of that yellow sap or that alloy. Another name is aloe latex. You'll have all of that, most of it will drip out of the, um, the plant. After your 15 to 30 minutes, you'll take it out. And as you see, my water is yellow. Sometimes my water is even more yellow than this, depending on how big the plant is. Now here's the part. Most people cut their aloe this way, where they, they cut it into these small sections. And after they cut it into small sections, again, they're using a knife too much. And I see so many cuts and bruises from this, but they use this, the knife and they cut it in these small sections. And then they're going to cut 
the skin, one part of it, and then you're gonna use a spoon and scoop out the rest. Now that's not the way I do it, but that's how most people do it. And to me, it's so slippery and it's time consuming. And depending on how big your aloe leaf is, you'll be here for a while, just cutting and scooping and cutting and scooping. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong or right way to cut it. But I use a cake spatula and it's so easy because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cake tool and slide it right under the leaf, right under the skin. And look how easy the skin separates from the aloe gel. No knife necessary. So no cuts, no bleeding. And as you see, the majority of the gel is still on the leaf, the other leaf. And so you're going to turn it over and take your cake tool and just get it under there and just slide it through. It's like filleting a fish without that sharp knife. And again, no knife necessary, right under the skin and it slides through so easy. And it's less time consuming. The most time is really just soaking the aloe to remove the aloe latex. But now we're gonna slide it and look at this. It's all of the aloe gel has been filleted. It's one long whole piece. And I'm gonna show you later what we're gonna do with the skin. I'm gonna use every bit of this aloe. Look at that. Nothing's really left on the skin. I got it all. And now we're gonna blend it. So we're gonna put it all in a blender and blend it up really good. And here's the thing that I notice most people miss. I hear all the time when people are using aloe for their hair, they're getting these white flakes. That's because you didn't strain it. You have to strain your aloe. If you don't strain it, you're gonna have flakes in your hair that looks like snow, dandruff, and it takes forever to get it out of your hair. So get something, a, a good strainer, and just let it strain and drip. There you see how it's dripping and straining. And now I have it, I can use this anytime. I spray it into my hair, I leave it into my hair, and a lot of times I freeze it. And so because you have so much of it, I'll freeze it and I'll use it later, and I'll pop it out when I need it. I put it in a smoothie. You also have to understand, healthy hair begins from the inside out. So. Not only are you going to use it externally on your hair, but like this with the ice cubes, I'll pop it in a smoothie. And now my body is getting the minerals and nutrients that this aloe plant has. So that's one of the ways I use it. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a fantastic aloe vera face mask. Now, uh, aloe vera treatment for your skin is so expensive and most of the face sheets are so expensive and they're very trendy now so I'm going to show you what to do. I'm using a shop towel. Shop towels have so much quality and it's just as good as a face sheet but not with the expense. So you're going to take your shop towel, fold it down and you're going to cut a moon shape out of your um, shop towel. It's so strong and absorbent. This is amazing. You'll see what you can do with this. Now, what I just cut, that's the eyes. I'm gonna go down about an inch and a half and I'm gonna cut out a nose. And as you see, I'm making a slit here. And then I'm gonna go down about an inch or so down and I'm gonna cut out my mouth. And you'll see when I'm done, I actually have an aloe vera sheet mask. One of these sheet masks in a store could cost anywhere from five to $50. But using the shop towel because of the quality of it, I have a very good quality sheet mask without the expense. So now what I'm gonna do is fold it and we're gonna place it back into our aloe vera and let it soak in there. And then we're just going to squeeze all of the liquid out of our homemade face sheet. The quality of it is really amazing, guys. We even use this to make our face mask. And I actually have a video showing you how to make your own face mask because of the pandemic. And this is the same material we use. This material actually is the same quality as an N95 mask. But after you soak it, you're gonna open it up and there, and it won't rip, this will last. And there you have an aloe vera face sheet for a skin treatment. Now, aloe vera is amazing for your skin. It hydrates, soothes, and smooths. Enjoy. 
Now I'm gonna show you, I told you, I was going to use all of the skin. I'm using every piece of this aloe vera plant. Now I'm gonna show you how to make an aloe vera cold press oil. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut all of the leaves like this and you're gonna cut them into smaller pieces because we're going to soak this aloe vera or ferment it to make a cold pressed aloe vera oil. Now, many people do this, but they heat it up on the stove. I wanna do it cold pressed because this way I'm not losing any of the nutrients. You can lose the nutrients when you heat this. So if you're doing it cold pressed, there's no heat, there's no processing. It's gonna naturally ferment into an aloe vera oil. So you're gonna cut this into as many small pieces as you can. And because the aloe vera has so many vitamins and minerals, vitamin A, B, C, and E, folic acid, copper, zinc, so many of the things that your skin needs and so soothing. Having your own aloe vera oil is something that you wanna keep. You can refrigerate it. I'm gonna show you how to put citric acid, which can preserve it. And then now we're just going to get, I use a mason jar, and we're gonna put all of the pieces inside of our mason jar. Fill your jar up to the top, and then you're gonna come back with an oil, a 100% oil. I use sweet almond oil. I love sweet almond oil because it's mineral rich, it's vitamin rich, and it's very light. But you can use coconut oil, you can use extra virgin olive oil, it's your choice. But you're gonna put all of your leaves inside of your jar, and then you're going to fill your jar with your pure oil. And after you fill your jar, with your pure oil, you're actually, what I do is I use a little bit of citric acid. Citric acid is a natural, natural preservative. This way, my aloe vera oil will have a very long shelf life. And so when you're using citric acid, you only need a little bit. And this is a one fourth of a teaspoon of citric acid. And after I put my citric acid in, I'm going to seal this up really good and I'm gonna place it in the sun. This is how you're going to get a natural cold pressed aloe vera oil. Now the thing about this placing it in the sun, this is the alternative to cooking it. It's gonna take a couple of weeks and some of you may say, I don't have that kind of time. But if you do, you'll have your cold pressed oil. Aloe promotes hair growth, healthy hair, healthy skin, and a healthy you. Enjoy.